Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing, where today we are going to be continuing to read The Iliad by Homer. So, let's get going. Book 9. Sorry, Book 19. Argument. The Reconciliation of Achilles and Agamem Agamemnon. Thetis brings to her son the armour made by Vulcan. She preserves the body of his friend from corruption and commands him to assemble the army to declare his resentment at an end. <coughs> Excuse me. Agamemnon and Achilles are solemnly reconciled. The speeches, presents and ceremonies on that occasion. Achilles is with great difficulty persuaded to refrain from the battle till the troops have refreshed themselves by the advice of Ulysses. The pre presents are converted to the tent, uh, sorry, conveyed to the tent of Achilles where Brises, Brises laments over the body of Patroclus. The hero obstinately refuses all repast and gives himself up to lamentations for his friend. Minerva descends to strengthen him by the order of Jupiter. He arms for the fight, his appearance described. He addresses himself to the horses and reproaches them with the death of Patroclus. One of them is miraculously endure, endued with voice and inspired to prophecy his fate. But the hero, not astonished by that prodigy, rushes with fury to the combat. The thirteenth day. The scene is on the seashore. Soon as Aurora heaved her orient head above the waves that blushed with early red, with newborn day to gladden mortal sight and gild the courts of heaven with sacred light, the immortal arms the goddess mother bears, swift to her son, her son she finds in tears, stretched o'er Patroclus's course, while all the rest, their sovereign sorrows in their own expressed. A ray divine her heavenly presence shed, and thus his hand soft touching Thetis said, Suppress, my son, this rage of grief, and know, it was not man but heaven that gave the blow. Behold what arms by Vulcan are bestowed, arms worthy thee, or fit to grace a god. Then drops the radiant burden on the ground, clang the strong, strong arms and ring the shores around. Back shrink the Myrmidons with dread surprise, and from the broad effulgence turn their eyes. Unmoved the hero kindles at the show, and feels with rage divine his bosom glow. From his fierce eyeballs living flames expire, and flash incessant like a stream of fire. He turns the radiant gift and feeds his mind, on all the immortal artist had designed. Goddess, he cried, these glorious arms that shine, with matchless art confessed the hand divine. Now to the bloody battle let me bend, but ah, the relics of my slaughtered friend, in those wide wounds through which his spirit fled, shall flies and worms obscene pollute the dead. That unavailing care be laid aside, the azure goddess to her son replied, whole years untouched, uninjured shall remain, fresh as in life the carcass of the slain. But go, Achilles, as affairs require, before the Grecian peers renounce their thine ire. Then uncontrolled in boundless war engage, and heaven with strength supply the mighty rage. Thetis bringing the armour to Achilles. Then in the nostrils of the slain she poured, nectarious drops and rich ambrosia showered. O'er all the course the flies forbid their prey, untouched it rests and sacred from decay. Achilles to the strand obedient went, the shores resounded with the voice he sent. The heroes heard and all the naval train that tend the ships or guide them o'er the main. Alarmed, transported at the well-known sound, frequent and full, the great assembly crowned. Studious to see the terror of the plain, long lost to battle, shine in arms again. Tydides and Ulysses first appear, lame with their wounds and leaning on the spear. These on the sacred seats of council placed, the king of men Atrides came at last. He too saw wounded by Agenor's son, Achilles rising in the midst begun. 
O monarch, but if far had been the fate Of thee, of me, of all the Grecian state, If, ere the day when by my passion swayed, Rash we contended for the black-eyed maid, Preventing Dian had dispatched her dart, And shot the shining mischief to the heart, Then many a hero had not pressed the shore, Nor Troy's glad fields been fattened with our gore, Long, long shall Greece the woes we caused bewail, And sad posterity repeat the tale. But this no more the subject of debate, Is past forgotten and resigned to fate. Why should, alas, a mortal man as I, Burn with a fury that can never die? Here then my anger ends, let war succeed, And even as Greece has bled, let Ilion bleed. Now call the hosts and try if in our sight Troy yet shall dare to camp a second night. I deem their mightiest when this arm he knows Shall scape with transport and with joy repose. He said his finished wrath with loud acclaim. The Greeks accept and shout Pelides' name. When thus not rising from his lofty throne In state unmoved the king of men begun. Hear me, ye sons of Greece, with silence here, And grant your monarch with impartial ear. A while your loud and timely joy suspend, And let your rash injurious clamours end. Unruly murmurs or ill-timed applause Wrong the best speaker and the justest cause. Nor charge on me, ye Greeks, the dire debate, No angry Jove and all-compelling fate. With fell Erinys urged my wrath that day, when from Achilles' arms I forced the prey. What then could I against the will of heaven, not by myself but vengeful ate driven? She, Jove's dread daughter, fated to infest, the race of mortals entered in my breast. Not on the ground that haughty fury treads, but prints her lofty footsteps on the heads. Of mighty men inflicting as she goes, Long festering wounds inextricable woes. Of old she stalked amid the bright abodes, And Jove himself the sire of men and gods. The world's great ruler felt her venomed dart, Deceived by Juno's wives, and, sorry, By Juno's wiles and female art. For when Als Alcmena's nine long months were run, and Jove expected his immortal son. To gods and goddesses the unruly joy he showed and vaunted of his matchless boy. From us, he said, this day an infant springs, fated to rule and born a king of kings. Saturnia asked an oath to vouch the truth and fix dominion on the favoured youth. The thunderer, unsuspicious of the fraud, pronounced those solemn words that bind a god. The joyful goddess from Olympus's height, swift to Achaean Argos bent her flight. Scarce seven moons gone lay Sathenelaus's wife. She pushed her lingering infant into life. Her charms Alcmena's coming labours stay, and stop the babe just issuing to the day. Then bids Saturnius bear his oath in mind. A youth, said she, of Jove's immortal kind, is this day born from Sthenelus he springs, and claims thy promise to be king of kings. Grief seized the thunderer by his oath engaged, stung to the soul he sorrowed and he raged. From his ambrosial head where perched she sate, he snatched the fury goddess of debate. The dread ir the irrevocable oath he swore, The immortal seats should ne'er behold her more, And whirled her headlong down forever driven From bright Olympus and the starry heaven. Thence on the nether world the fury fell, Ordained with man's contentious race to dwell. Full oft the god his son's hard toils bemoaned, Cursed the dire fury and in secret groaned. 258. Even thus, like Jove himself, was I misled, While raging Hector heaped our camps with dead. 
What can the errors of my rage atone? My martial troops, my treasures are thy own. This instant from the navy shall be sent, Whate'er Ulysses promised at thy tent. But thou appeased proportions, pro sorry, propitious to our prayer, Resume thy arms and shine again in war. And with that we come to the end of another episode. So, thank you very much for joining today. I hope you all have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night. No matter what time of day it is, I hope you all have a wonderful one of it. And as always, we will be back tomorrow for more of The Longing. Goodbye.